Hello and welcome to the No Name Prayer Podcast. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining me in this Lenten reflection. For you who are new, welcome. For those that have been there, welcome back. I am glad that you're here. Let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're reading from the Ascension, Lenten Companion, Walking with Jesus to Jerusalem. Deeper. Jesus replied. Luke 10, verse 30. Sunday of the second week of Lent. Last week, we explored Luke 10 and steeped ourselves in Jesus' conversation with the lawyer who wants to inherit eternal life. When prompted, the lawyer responds to Jesus by quoting the heart of the law from the Old Testament. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, verses 25 to 27. The story does not end there, however. It is just beginning. The lawyer, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Luke 10, verse 29. Jesus responds with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Before we unpack the parable, Let us pause for a moment and consider what does not happen. After all, we can sense a bit of aggression in the lawyer's question, Who is my neighbor? While the lawyer may genuinely want to know the answer, his tone hints at resistance. But notice how Jesus does not respond. Jesus does not respond with anger arrogance or aggression. Instead, by responding with the parable, Jesus seeks to go deeper. In this, we can learn much about how Jesus loves, especially how Jesus loves us. Jesus always desires to take us deeper. Jesus will always meet us where we are in life. He never expects us to be who we are not, or where we are not. Jesus loves us as we are, where we are. But Jesus also loves us too much to leave us in a lesser place. While he is forever meeting us on our terms, he is also forever longing to lead us on his terms. There is always more that he wants to give us, more he wants to show us, more he wants to heal in us. Jesus wants to go deeper. At the same time, Jesus has perfect reverence for our free will. Jesus respects us too much to force us to go deeper. He longs for depth in his relationship with us, but we have to choose to go deeper with him. Any relationship, any healthy relationship, has depth. This is true for good friends, dating couples, and husbands and wives. What makes a relationship healthy is that they choose to have substantial conversations, not superficial ones. At some point, each of those relationships eventually includes conversations that are personal conversations that go deeper when we go deeper with God we get more personal we tell him not only what we need but why we need it we not only pray for others but we share with God what they mean to us and how we feel about their need for a prayer depth requires us to be specific and and acknowledge the deepest details in our heart This week, as we unpack the parable of the Good Samaritan, let us give the Lord permission to take us deeper. He is inviting us, but he's also waiting for us to give him permission. For your prayer, 
stay here for an additional 10 minutes. Today, pray with the Psalm 139, verses 1 through 16. Trust the one who is speaking to you through those words and give him permission to take you deeper. Psalm 139 For the leader, a psalm of David Lord, you have probed me, you know me You know when I sit and stand You understand my thoughts from afar You sift through my travels and my rest With all my ways you are familiar Even before a word is on my tongue Lord, you know it all. Behind and before you encircle me and rest your hand upon my upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, far too lofty for me to reach. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I ascend to the heavens, you're there. If I lie down in Sheol, there you are. If I take the wings of dawn and dwell beyond the sea, even there your hand guides me, your right hand holds me fast. If I say, surely darkness shall hide me, and night shall be my light. Darkness is not dark for you, and night shines as day. Darkness and light are but one. You formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My very self you know. My bones are not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, fashioned in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw me unformed. In your book all are written down. My days were shaped before one came to be. The word of the Lord. I have to say I love, I love where it says couple of things from from the from scripture from the psalm that we just read is where he says where is it just the words where it says rest your hand upon me i what i pictured was a child like me as a little girl and his hand on my head like just resting on my head you know, like a parent does. It's kind of what I saw when I read that. And I also love where it says, you formed me in my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My very self, you know. Um... And as I'm reading that, it makes me think about, you know, we are always rejecting ourselves, always talking about, I mean, I say we, but I'm talking, I can talk for anyone else. I can speak for anyone else. I'm speaking for myself right now, you know, and I know that there are a lot of people like that, you know, we have in our low self-esteem, we, we reject who God made us to be. We reject the way we look he made us in his image right we reject how we look we don't like how we look we don't like this we don't like that well we're telling him we're rejecting him by rejecting ourselves it's the way i'm looking at it and god does not make junk 
Everything he makes is beautiful. And he made us. He made you in his image. He made me in his image. Wonderful are your works. Guys, you're wonderful. You are wonderful. I am wonderful. (laughs) That's what you have to think about. Guys, we are wonderful because he made us. My very self, you know. He knows you inside out. He knows you better than you know yourself and he loves you. He loves me and he knows me. So that's something that touched my heart. And then from that reflection, um, there's the substantial conversations and the word deeper. Um, it is so important for us to be able to have deep and meaningful meaningful conversations with people and have close relationships uh, with others sometimes. But we forget that the one who will truly fill the void and the need that we have is him. You know, we... we We dedicate and we spend so much time trying to get people to love us and to like us and to build these relationships with people that half the time they don't, they don't really care whether or not, you know, not everyone, but you know, sometimes people don't care whether or not you have a relationship with them or, you know, people, everyone has their own struggles, I guess. And well it's okay to want to have relationships with others i guess what i'm getting at is the time that all the time that we dedicate and spend on building relationships with other people because we have a void in within us you know we need to feel loved we need to feel connected we need to feel accepted all those things the only one that can do that is him Jesus is the only one that can fill that void, fill that need. And we don't even dedicate time to him. Not as much as we do to other things or people, you know? He's like a lover. He's longing for us, longing to have a deep relationship with us, waiting for us to accept him, to accept him, waiting for us to say, yes, I long for you. Jesus, I give you permission to take me deeper. And I give you permission to take over me. Take over my mind. Take over my heart. My mouth. My whole being. I am yours. Well, I hope you like today's reflection. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for praying with me. Um, If you guys haven't noticed, uh, you might hear mistakes or anything like that during the recordings. I've said it before, but I'll say it again in case you're new. I do not edit. So I don't practice beforehand. I don't, uh, whatever I'm doing, you're getting it as I'm doing it. So um, any mistakes, anything going on, uh, you're getting it is what it is pretty much and i'm doing that because i i don't have a perfect life i don't speak perfectly nothing about me is perfect and i do not want to convey that when i started the podcast it was about um sharing my journey my struggles with with you and part of that struggle is me wanting to uh be perfect and i'm not so for me from the beginning showing that imperfection was a big deal it was uh nerve-wracking and if you go back and listen to like the first few the first episodes that i did um i was so so nervous i'm more comfortable now you know i'm like you know what i've grown in my faith as well and i'm just like lord i'm doing it for you you asked me to do this i'm going to do it but um it is what it is they're gonna get whatever whatever they get that's it that's me (laughs) um but um i do have to say that this has helped me heal 
with a lot of things and has helped grow my faith and remain strong and I'm not gonna lie there are times I don't want to do this and for a little bit there I was not recording as often because I was struggling I was uh, feeling kind of depressed and feeling beat and tired of being tired but I'm not gonna give up God is good he has been good to me too many blessings he has given me and this is something very very small that I can do to share that so enough of that like I said have a wonderful day um hopefully uh we'll talk again tomorrow pray for me that I will pray for you please share with a friend share the podcast so that others can walk this Lenten journey with us